Hey guys, it's Nico from Steel City Vintage. Man, I haven't said that in a long time. It's true, we haven't been on for, at this point, maybe two months. Um, what happened? Well, we, uh, you guys who have been following me on Instagram know I went on a vacation to Greece as we often try to do uh, every summer for three weeks. It was fantastic. It went by really, really quickly as it often does. Um, way too fast. Um, little background information, my wife, is from Greece. Uh, my parents were also born there. Uh, my in-laws are still there, my brother-in-law. So it's a, it's a trip we like to take every summer. Um, so I was doing that for a little bit. And uh, you know, after that, just as everybody else, um, life got to me a little bit. You know, I went through some personal things. Um, thank God, you know, nothing too serious. Um, but yeah, I went, uh, Went through some stuff and we took a little hiatus from YouTube. Um, it is also quite difficult um, to do YouTube, to do uh, Steel City Vintage um, in conjunction uh, with working a full-time job. Uh, I do physical therapy, I'm a doctor of physical therapy, um, specialize in the geriatric population and I currently work at um, a long-term care facility and that's my uh, nine to five. So um, Steel City is what I do still full-time but um, on the side and um, as I've said before, it I think allows me to give a different perspective when it comes to uh, the vintage watch world and dealing in general. Because uh, I'm able to stock the site with pieces that I enjoy because this is basically like a passion project turn business. Um, so that allows me to just be able to buy things that I like and then offer them up to the public and I think that that comes across with some of the work and content that we produce because uh, I'm passionate about all this stuff. I'm trying to sell you guys a product that I personally myself enjoy. As I've stated, there's some odd occasions um, like taking in consignments or just other things that really, really sell well um, that I offer on the site because they sell well um, that are still great products in general. They just don't personally speak to me. Um, so yeah, we've, we've taken a little break, but we're back now, right? Um, and we came back with a bang. I came back, um, you know, took a couple of weeks off um, and then got offered to do our first show, which is huge. You know, like I said, I wake up every day and you know, I'm it just amazed at uh, support and how much of a reach and how much of you guys actually watch our content not so much here on youtube yet um but you know but on instagram and other places as well the, the groups and and things like that um so when somebody who myself like myself uh considers myself to be like a nobody um gets offered to do a show it's like me really okay Cool, so we did the Philly Watch Fair in Philadelphia, obviously. And from what I know that this show has been running for, is this the second year? I believe the second year. Um, and they plan on continuing to do it in the future. Um, so we got invited to that and this video will be more of a vlog of, um, you know, my time there. It was a smaller show compared to you know other ones that I've been in the past, but all the guys there were fantastic, um, and hopefully this uh, show can grow in the future. I was um, offered a booth there um, to represent the vintage community, which was cool because this show was basically focused around micro brands. Um, not something that I'm really really familiar with, you know. To be completely transparent, I kind of only. Um, dive into the vintage watch world. I know of, you know, modern watches obviously, but not something I'm that particularly interested in. Uh, but micro brands in, in particular, I find it pretty cool because they're almost of 
the vintage in nature early on in the sense that they're not really mass produced. There are a lot of the, um, you know, watches or components, at least from speaking to the gentleman who had booths there, um, you know, are put together by hand, um, low production qualities. And a lot of them take uh, their inspiration, as you'll see, from, you know, vintage watches of old. So it was cool to um, get into a different part of the watch world and pick people's brains and just have conversations with other individuals who are passionate about what they do and you know try to take in some of that energy that was good vibes and hear uh, something that they have to say about why they feel their you know their product that they're offering is of quality and worth your hard-earned money there was one other uh, booth there that was also vi offering vintage watches so definitely we kicked it for a little bit and um, had some good conversation and you'll see some of their watches as well and they were uh, came across as really cool genuine uh, dudes so um, if you're ever in the area or you know feel so inclined follow their socials as well um, and hope you guys enjoy the video thank you so much I'm Steve. I work in Maryland Watchworks in Hagerstown, Maryland. Um, Good first. We've got a few vintage pieces over here. Some of the ones that I particularly like, but we have a this well, early 1950s it. Movado a single pusher chronograph. Yeah. So a single pusher to start, stop, and to reset your chronograph functions. Yeah, that one's beautiful. Another real interesting piece. A Gruen Air Flight. The bought. This guy was made by Gruen in a dress watch version, but also in this very, very rare skin diver version. It's got a unique parlor trick. It was designed as a pilot's watch. So when you hit one o'clock, it instantly switches over to 24 hour time and then reverts back when you get back to one o'clock again, which I just think is the coolest trick. Nobody else has ever done it, not before, not since. So. Yeah, that's really cool. We call 12 hours too. It's kind of like a modified calendar function in a sense. And my other one has the Cartier Bascalante. You don't see these guys too often, but uh, similar to JLC's Reverso, if you get under the jewel there, it'll do a little flip a roo and go back down there you go. the crystal. Nice and safe. So you guys source a lot of different vintage watches. You do anything on the servicing side? Uh, yeah, we do uh, servicing, we do repairs, uh, full restorations, obviously. Uh, but everything everything that has to do with watches, we do. We do cover micro brands to provide them with warranty center. Uh, we do the assemblies for a lot of these guys as well. Uh, so there really isn't anything under the scope of watchmaking that we that we don't. And you're on all the socials. Where can I find you guys at? Uh, MarylandWatchparks.com. What times in of sport? There's all our info right there. Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Bell. I am the founder of Cincinnati Watch Company. Um, we started in 2018 in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, all our watches are assembled here in Cincinnati by a um, Lydix trained watchmaker. Uh, he got his roast stuff and spent 20 years in watchmaking. Um, many of our watches are inspired by um, things in Cincinnati. Uh, our Union Terminal watch was the first watch that we ever created based on the clock at um, Union Terminal, uh, which is a 1933 kind of train station turned into our museum center. Um, but I think the watch that caught your eye that we made, we call the Dust Diver. Um, this watch uh, is made out of a new old stock um, circa 1970s Swiss-made case. 
We put a modern movement in it, a Salida-based uh, manual wine movement. Uh, new dial, new hands, new acrylic crystal, but everything else in the case is original. Um, those did sell out quite quickly. Um, and uh, we named it the Desk Diver and put kind of some fun text on it uh, just to uh, note to our customers that this watch is not water resistant at all. Um, and used a little funny play on words there with uh, our friends over at Rolex. These cases that we, we recovered were pretty good, almost new. Block um, that this was. We could only make 75 of them because um, only 75 of the cases were good enough to sell. Uh, but it was very, very popular. What did that translate to modern wise? Uh, Does it get a reissue of this one? Yes. So these sold out in about a day and we could only make 75, but we kept having um, demand for the piece. So we did a modern reinterpretation of this watch, which was made by an esoteric Swiss maker that since went out of business. Um, but now you have a screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance, a sapphire crystal, still bi bi-directional tension fit bezel. So somewhat of a real diver instead of a disc. Diver. Yes, you could, you could in theory dive with this watch if you wanted, I suppose. Um, only difference really between this one and the original is the case back's a little thicker to accommodate the uh, the rotor of the automatic movement. Um, and of course, we, we had no idea what the dial would have looked like, what the hands would have looked like, so it's just kind of like so it's that our attempt at 70s funky cases. Yeah. And the case looks, you know, shockingly similar. Yes. So how did you guys go about getting it so close to the original? Uh, we had to send out the original case to um, a factory partner of ours to kind of make it as close as they could. I mean, there has to be some differences because when you're going from a pressed in acrylic crystal to a sapphire crystal that has to sit in a um, gasket to maintain water resistance, there are some little differences. The bezel's a little bit thicker yeah. than the OG and the um, case back, like I mentioned before, is a little bit thicker, but otherwise it's pretty faithful. Press it's, back versus screw down. Yeah, this yep. is press back, screw down. Yep. So very modern versus a an, an very old school. Very made. old school uh, case. Yeah. That's so cool. So I'm Eugene Stolman. I'm the owner of Maryland Watchworks and East Stolman Watch Company. This is my personal design watch and kind of a passion project for me. They're very vintage inspired, which is how I got my start into watches, was doing the vintage watches. Uh, they're sterling silver cases, really plated, so they're not gonna tarnish right away. They have a dome sapphire crystal. A few of my favorite ones that I've done so far, this is one here. This is a malachite dial. That's one that I'm working on that I'm gonna come out with next year. Nothing that one. It has our movement inside, which is the Maryland 7081. Just based on a 2824, which we black out. Yes and regulate in-house. So when you say you're working on this type of dial, right? Mm -hmm. What is the, Talk to them about what does that actually mean? So when I'm working on a dial is basically, so this one right here is a sample. So we're measuring thickness, how strong the stone is. Is it gonna survive in the watch? Uh, we're applying the indices and really showing it around seeing, do people actually like it? Yeah. Uh, another one, uh, because of the thickness of the stone, which is only one millimeter, we got to make sure that the stone is also strong enough to survive. The application of the hour numerals and all that stuff. Exactly. Now, who's doing the cutting part? So there are several companies that are doing that. Okay. We have uh, a company that is several companies that are doing like different dials for us so there's some in china there's some in switzerland so we're kind of comparing all of them cost wise also do we like how it turns out yeah so one done by a different company is this one here so there's different dial companies and in terms of the cutting and you're sourcing that but everything else is done exactly we're putting it together we're sandwiching it up we're applying the indices uh the printing is already on there yeah so uh this is a marble dial and with a red date and that is a, a copper pressed out in the center yeah so I call a little this, bit of like a tapestry in the middle exactly yeah. so i call this guy the tuxedo 
a metal cap. It reminds me of, a, of that. Yeah, and what made you uh, choose the Breguet numerals? Well, it's a very classic si a style, Correct. Uh, and I'm more of a dress watch person anyway, mm -hmm. so I really like looking at Breguet numerals. They're typically easier to read. Uh, they're definitely more of a dress watch because they don't have loom in them, but being a 39 millimeter, yeah, I think it goes with you know your business attire and then talk to us about the design of the case so the design of the case what was the inspiration for that yeah so that is from basically i took it from a 1950s movado which was one of the first vintage watches that really inspired me to uh to basically copy a lot of what was the reference on that one do you know i, I don't remember i usually bring the case around with me yeah um so. But it's an uh, old stainless steel case. It's 39 millimeter. The lugs are very, very similar. Kind of like those cow horn lugs, too. Yeah, cow horn lugs. I've been and and I, I've been wearing it. It's like the only thing I wish is that it was bigger. <laughs> so cool. I decided to make it a. Uh, Just blow it up a little bit. Cool. Cool.